Soil pollution or contamination leads to loss of 24 million tons of topsoil every year. That's how huge the environmental effect is. Soil contamination occurs when hazardous chemicals are buried, spilled or migrated to uncontaminated soil. Contamination can take place through industrial waste disposal, improper disposal of hazardous chemicals, land development, local waste dumping and excessive use of fertilizers and pesticides but do you know there are ways to treat this contaminated soil before we move into understanding how we can treat the soil let's first know why treating or decontaminating the soil is important contaminated soil affects everything the food we eat the air we breathe the water we drink it alters soil's biodiversity reduces soil organic matter and soil's capacity to act as a filter polluted soil can release contaminants into the groundwater which goes on to accumulate in plant tissue and is then passed to grazing animals birds and finally to the humans that eat the plants and animals pollutants in soil groundwater and in the food chain can cause a variety of diseases and excess mortality in humans from short term acute effects such as intoxications or diarrhea to a long term chronic effects like cancer soil remediation or decontamination refers to the use of different techniques to control then fine reduce or eliminate contaminants and ensure that the soil is no longer a risk to public and environmental health there are different techniques to decontaminate the soil in situ and ex situ methods let us begin by understanding the in situ method first in situ soil decontamination refers to the process of treating contaminated soil on site without excavating or removing it this method is typically used when the volume of contaminated soil is large and then removing the soil would be disruptive or expensive there are several in situ decontamination methods including bioremediation this method involves introducing microorganisms into the contaminated soil to break down the contaminants the microorganisms consume the contaminants as a food source and convert them into less harmful substances phytoremediation this method involves using plants to remove contaminants from the soil the plants absorb the contaminants through their roots and break them down into less harmful substances chemical oxidation this method involves adding chemicals into the contaminated soil to break down the contaminants into less harmful substances ex situ soil decontamination on the other hand involves removing the contaminated soil from the site and treating it elsewhere this method is typically used when the contamination is severe or when the volume of contaminated soil is small enough to make excavation and removal feasible there are several ex situ decontamination methods including thermal desorption This method involves heating the contaminated soil to a high temperature to vaporize the contaminants which are then collected and treated. Soil washing This method involves physically washing the soil to remove the contaminants. This can be done using water or a chemical solution and the soil is then separated from the liquid and treated. Landfilling. This method involves excavating the contaminated soil and placing it in a specially designed landfill the landfill is designed to prevent the contaminants from leaching into the surrounding soil or groundwater overall both in situ and ex situ soil decontamination methods have their advantages and disadvantages and the choice of method depends on the specific situation and contaminants present hope this video was helpful in understanding the different techniques of soil decontamination give us a thumbs up if you like the video and please do share it with your friends who can benefit from this video for more such videos subscribe to our channel let's tute make it easy